So I've recently purchased a Raspberry Pi 4 and that makes me a proud owner of a Raspberry Pi 4, an Arduino Udon R3, as well as having access to a microbit that I borrowed from a friend. So um, I figured I want to make a video explaining, you know, what's the difference between three and which one should you buy? So a Raspberry Pi 4 is a mini computer that runs a micro uh, ARM processor. So more like a mobile phone, actually, just without the screen and batteries and such. The Arduino is more like an advanced calculator, like your Casio TI-84. And the Microbit is more like an educational tool. Uh, it is very similar to the Arduino Uno R3, but it's more like a cheap beaker that you get in your school lab. Uh, yes, you can technically do some research in it, but you won't actually want to do <laughs> use them for anything serious. So with that, what can I do with them? So first for the Raspberry Pi. So I have a Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gigabyte model in an official casing over here. As you can see it's from the inside. So you just plug in the power, um, monitor, mouse, keyboard, and then you get yourself a fully working desktop computer. Uh, here I'm running a 64 bit version of the Raspbian OS. Uh, which is a lightweight Linux distribution that can easily make me to re able to reply emails, uh, browse the web, you know, watch YouTube at 480p, and you know, many other stuff that you can do on a low-end computer as well as your phone. Uh, the problem is that YouTube is kind of only working on 480p and anything 780p and above is kind of choppy and quite difficult for the hardware. Anyway, this is already two years old. So I can even actually code Python in this computer and easier without setup, I can just do it on Google Collab. And I can also, also code many other kind of programming such as R on Notepad++. However, I couldn't get R Studio working. They're not officially support yet. So I could actually run R Studio in Y and some emulation software. Just let me know, maybe leave a comment down below if you want me to try that. So for an Arduino R3, um, I got a kit with myself with a breadboard, a stable motor, uh, some LED resistor display and so on. So I'm not really that great with this yet. I'm not really sure what, what to do that. But this is some of the thing you can do for, for a beginner. So you can use it to light up an LED. You can use it to control the movement of a stable motor. You can control other equipment with the buttons or you can display something on the LED display menu. So, or, or you can actually do all of them at once. So you can use a button to control the LED to light up and turn the model. At the same time, lock down a temperature from a temperature probe and stuff. So um, with that, you can actually, let's say you have a greenhouse that you want to control. So you can use Arduino to control the fan so that when the temperature gets too high or too low, you can make the fan to turn on so that you can maintain a constant temperature in your greenhouse and so on. So as you can see in Arduino, there's a lot of pins here that you can use to control other equipment. So you can also see something that is very similar on the Raspberry Pi. So they're actually called the GPIO, uh, General Purpose Input and Output Pins. On the Arduino, is more of a slot and the Raspberry Pis are actually pins up here. Okay, so as the name suggests, you can use those to actually control um, input and output signal. So you can control a, sig a digital signal with a high and low voltages, or you can just use variable voltage for analog signal. So in the Arduino Uno, you can actually see some of them is called A1 to A5, that's for analog signal, and the other one on the side, which is zero to 13, those are for digital signal. So um, the high and low signal can then, of course, be used to control model, like an LED and so on and so forth. So you can actually do all of the same thing that you can do an Arduino on a Raspberry Pi. However, uh, you need to plug your Arduino into an external computer to program it, while Raspberry Pi, you can program it directly on itself. And then we come to the microbit. Okay, so it's similar to the Arduino, but instead of a GPIO pins, you have those connectors on the bottom. So, and they have a built-in 20, 25 LEDs directly on the board, and an A and B button on the left and right. So the button can be used to interface directly as an input and the display can be used directly as an output. So unlike Arduino, where you always need external wires for any kind of buttons, LEDs, 
uh, display and signaling and so on, you have almost everything built on board. There's even a, a Bluetooth chip you want to use if you don't want to you know, connect to a computer where it's, it's kind of finicky compared to the, the micro bit we can use an iPad app to program this directly. So you can run, so you can actually run program a micro bit to play a snake game without any additional accessory. You just need the power to input this. So with, with that, with, 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 I mean, which, which one should I choose? Well, the answer it's always, it depends on what you're gonna do with it. So if you need something to take a camera input, let's say, and process it on the go with a neural network, and then send the data over to Wi-Fi, um, and then take the Raspberry Pi. You know, there, there's nothing else you can do about that. So I, I'm trying to do something like that. So let me know if you want to see that, but it might actually take a long time because it's quite complicated. So alternatively, if you want a smart modem that actually filled out the advertisement to, in your house so that everything in your house, any smart device in your house is not just not tracking your data, but you will not see any kind of advertisement in your house. Uh, then you can also take the Raspberry Pi and check out the Pi Hole project by LTT and go to the video description down below for their GitHub page for the Pi Hole project. So if you want to play some retro games and don't want to use a phone and computer, don't know why you do that, but you can actually get the Pi for a very cheap emulator platform. You can actually check out, check out the Retro Pi project, which is on the official uh, Raspberry Pi website. Or you can check this video out by the low, low spec gamer on one of the Game Boy Pi thingy. Okay, with that, but if you want to do something like, if you want an equipment to monitor your greenhouse environment, like I said just now, uh, you want it to open a window when it's get too hot or you want to get open a fan when it's get too cold, then you can get Arduino. Yes, you can get a Raspberry Pi, but it will be cheaper to, to run on this. It'll be easier and less point of failure. So you can check this video by The Great Scott, which is actually a good usage of the Raspberry uh, Arduino in this use case. Or if you want to have like a prop parents machine, which actually give you a pat on the shoulder when you give you the coin, you can also get the Arduino and then check this project out on uh, this video by Simon Goetz. And the last one, if you want your cousin, someone young, someone that is new to the programming interface, someone that have no knowledge in, in electronics, you might want to get them the micro bit because it's just much easier to start with and you, you don't need to buy so many accessories to, to start the programming and play with it. So in conclusion, uh, the Pi is mini computer that although also allow you to control other components to the GPIO pins. It's much more versatile than the other two, but also much more complicated and much more expensive since the other one, since you need to, you know, install your own OS, control your own OS, you know, control the uh, package dependency and all, all those things and so on. The Arduino in, in comparison is much more simple, far less power hungry and you know, but most of the project that you're going to run in, in the field, it's not going to be that complicated and would not be necessary that you go for the Pi. And the power, the power requirements is so much lower. If you're running on a battery, it will really makes a huge difference. And you'll make the power input and delivery a lot easier, you know. And the last one is a micro bit. So despite being quite as capable as the Duino, it doesn't use normal pins. It uses those weird contacts you need more connectors to work so they're more proprietary you know you it, the, the accessory itself they're way more expensive but it's not intended for that this is to get your cousin to start to learn about programming logical thinking and computational thinking and in turn really get them to be excited and then you get them something like this and this and actually let them continue on with the programming journey with much cheaper and much more versatile programming language as well as accessory. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. It is a very different thing from what I usually do. So let me know if you want to see more of that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.